Hi, I'm Jerry Brown from Music Makers, and I want to explain that this Reverie Harp, we designed it for music therapy. <coughs> And we should really emphasize the word therapy more than music, because this isn't a, an instrument that you can play songs on so much. It's more an instrument that's used for therapy, therapeutic reasons. It's a tool for therapy. So let me give, let me give you an idea, <clears throat> an example, of a way that you can use this instrument in kind of a non-musical way. And let me just take you on a little fishing trip with this reverie harp. Let's imagine that you wake up early in the morning and the sun is just rising. And you go down to the lake and you get in a fishing boat with your gear. And you start going across the lake to your favorite fishing pole. And you're... Uh, cruising along over the water, it's beautifully calm. You feel the wind in your face and the sun, the warmth of the sun rising. Beautiful shadows of the trees on the banks and how they reflect off the water. You come to this fishing hole. You've been there before, you kind of know where you're headed. Maybe there's a drop off there or some uh, reeds, shallow reeds where you know there's some fish. You stop the boat and you throw down, throw in the anchor and it sinks down in the water, down to the bottom. Now you can sit back and relax. Your boat is anchored. There's beauty all around you. You maybe hear some uh, birds in the distance. Chirping in the trees. And you, just, you get your fishing pole ready and you decide to uh, cast out over toward, uh, toward the shallow reeds. And so you Make a big cast, and your bait hits the water, splash, and you start to reel in your, your lure very slowly. Hoping the fish will notice. up empty. Then you notice there's a log submerged over in another direction and you think, you wonder, well I wonder what kind of fish might be lurking in the shadows of that log. So you're cast over that direction. The lure hits the water, splash, and you start pulling on the, uh, the Breaking the uh, line on your rod, drawing it in, and suddenly you feel a little nibble. So you stop, you let the line go slack, waiting for the fish to take the uh, lure into its mouth, get the hook in all the way, and then you pull on the rod real quickly and it sets the hook and now you're in for the battle and you're and the fish is swimming and diving going back and forth and sometimes it jumps out of the water throwing splash all, splashing water all over it's a great fight and you're bringing in this this fish and you're getting up to the boat and you dip in your net and you pull it out of the water. There's dripping water, and you have this fish. It's still, st still wobbling or uh, jumping a little bit in the net. But 
you put it in your, uh, you take your hook off and you, and you uh, put the fish on your, uh, uh, in your live box or, or on your stringer. And you lean back and you think, wow, what a beautiful, beautiful day this is. You caught your first fish. And the sun is getting warmer and warmer. And you maybe see uh, some deer coming down to the lake shore to uh, have a drink. Now this sets a scene in your mind, doesn't it? You can imagine. Everyone can imagine something a little bit different, different scene, maybe a place they've been before. But you see what it does, it occupies your mind. It puts you in a state of mind of, of uh, a happy memory or a, a pleasant dream, uh, something to look forward to maybe, uh, or something just to be grateful for from your past. And that's that's very therapeutic just to do that. It's, um, it's a way of, of clearing out your mind of negative things or uh, uh, current problems or, or just boredom or, or uh, something like that and giving yourself something positive to think about and and dwell on and be grateful for and, and look forward to. And <clears throat> so that kind of therapy is something that's sorely needed, especially in hospital and, and nursing home settings where, you know, taking care of the medicine and people are comfortable, you know, uh, well, well fed and, and clothed and warm and safe and, and everything. but. <clears throat> they're often bored and they're lonely and they're depressed and so it's the mental aspect of therapy that an instrument like this, a tool like this can help with. It can occupy a person, it can uh, give them great pleasure and uh, <clears throat> can um, help them um, enter a different mental state. So you're not always dwelling on the negative, your, your condition, your, <clears throat> your um, aches and pains and so forth. And so um, I would uh, just encourage you to think about the reverie harp as a tool for doing this sort of thing. Perhaps you can think of a way to use it for storytelling or for uh, guided imagery or, or um, just having fun with. and. Uh, letting the patient uh, or the resident play a little bit on it and interact with you and uh, it's uh, it's meant to be used in that sort of way